<laughs> and multiple of them now. Somebody that, else making that noise. That was worse, dude. <laughs> How's that? Wow. That's very unhelpful. Okay. Good afternoon. Hey, welcome to New Life's uh, Living Room, and uh, thanks for joining us on our podcast this week. Um, excited to be joined by Jordan and Pastor Don and Mike Trevino. So great to have you with us today, Mike. Um, we teased everybody a little bit on the podcast last week that uh, we have some uh, some survey results. Uh, first of all, I want to set up the the pleasure, but also the importance of having Mike here with us is uh, Mike is uh, a business consultant and uh, uh, has done a number of uh, uh, customer, um, oh, what was the word? Uh, there you go. Customer experience. Um, that He's in the business of that. So done a number of customer experience surveys. And uh, so he has a lot of experience and expertise in, in how and what kind of questions to ask uh, so that we understand and uh, that the, the businesses or our, our church can be in a position to uh, respond in the most healthy way. And uh, so that's why this survey was fantastic. Uh, and I appreciate all your work you've done on that. Uh, tell us a little bit about, um, I, I gave a brief overview, but why, why the survey? A couple things. One, we wanted to gauge uh, what people felt about our response as New Life City Church to the coronavirus crisis. How did we do in mobilizing resources for people? How did we do in being able to still faithfully minister the word? And then we also wanted to know, what are people thinking about coming back to in-person worship? When are they going to be ready? How should it look? Things like that. So we wanted to collect all that information. Yeah, there's an enormous uh, variety of opinions and information out there. And so we're trying to do our best to be faithful to uh, who God has called us to. And uh, we, you know, we're just so appreciative of our church family and church community. And so uh, that's why we wanted to do this. So, uh, so thanks again for all your efforts in that. And uh, if you would tell us a little bit about uh, uh, what we learned. Sure. I'll try and just hit the high points here real quick. Uh, the survey respondents, pretty good split, male and female, skews a little heavier towards a female. We got, uh, at this point, we have uh, 64 respondents, 56% female, 43% male. Really good cross section. If you look at the age, they really came in very evenly distributed across all the ages represented here at New Life in proportion, so that's a good thing. Uh, 43% of the respondents had children. So again, that probably fits pretty well within the church body. So I, we feel like we, I guess I'm saying all that to say this, feel like we've got pretty good representative data. So it wasn't heavy on uh, one aspect of our demograph right. demographics. Correct. Not demography. Here's just some fun facts before we get into the more actionable things. Uh, of the resp 64 respondents, 62% of those said, I've watched the live stream every Sunday. Mm -hmm. Then another 31% of what said, I've watched most weeks. So that's 95% of the folks who have watched almost every week. So that's very encouraging. And right. so kudos awesome. to everybody out there. So thanks for tuning in, yes. as they say. Um, we ask about children engaging with the children's ministry resources. And really, that was, I'm actually glad we asked that question because we found out that we hadn't done a really good job of communicating the fact that those were available. Mm -hmm. So we've rectified that, and hopefully now you're, you're better tuned in to be able to get to those children's ministry resources. We ask about the daily devotions on Facebook. Uh, not, uh, not the level of engagement we would have liked, but... Not terrible. Mm -hmm. And so that being the case, we're adjusting the frequency on that as well. Mm -hmm. Here's something that I thought was super encouraging, and that is 60% of the folks that responded said they have been, in on, been uh, involved in online connect groups, mm. which is really, really wow. good. Mm. Yeah. It's awesome. Wow. Really good. And then we asked this question before we... We asked two questions before we dived into the more operational things. Uh, we said, are you feeling spiritually healthy right now? Mm 
And here's the options we gave. And I'll, I do want to go into detail on this because I thought it's, it's good. It's informative information. So the choices were growing and excited. I'm making steady progress. I'm about the same as I was before. I'm a little bit discouraged, or I'm very discouraged. Mm. So here's how they came back. 22% said, I'm growing and excited. 31% mm. said, I'm making steady progress in my Christian life. 35 or 36% said, about the same as I was. And then 11% said, I'm a little discouraged. Mm -hmm. And nobody said that I'm very discouraged. Wow. Mm. So it's good. I mean, this is, it's a tough time. Yeah, yeah. right. And so... You know, it's good. Good to uh, kind of reach out and take the pulse. Mm -hmm. And then we ask about, have you found ways to reach out and help others during the crisis? 83% said that they had. Wow. Wow. So that's good. Really good. And then if we want to, I'll turn this back to you, and then we can jump into the, yeah. to what it's going to look like afterwards. But if you want to chat about those things, that's great. Yeah, just super excited about um, uh, the, all those aspects. That, you know, from the the percentage of people that uh, of you you all that stayed engaged and served even through this. Uh, maybe uh, um, I, I know we did a couple of things here at, at New Life with serving uh, through our connect groups and other people that other ministries that got involved to to serve some less fortunate. Uh, but my guess is that that's also representative of just people uh, who. Uh, have a spirit of serving, and that's what you uh, know it is to follow Jesus. And so uh, that's incredibly encouraging. And then the, um, yeah, the, the spiritual growth question uh, fascinated me. Um, uh, again, was encouraged by that. Uh, means that um, I, I guess the one thing that crosses my mind is, man, how, how do we... How do we find out? How do we encourage that 11% mm. that was discouraged? Because, I, mm. you know, 11% is still too, ma too many of my family, my community mm. uh, that's discouraged. How, how do we reach out to them? Mm -hmm. But encourage that uh, others are, are growing and staying. And that just, I think, is, goes to a level of maturity we have uh, here at New Life that we want to continue to grow in. So that's a couple things encouraged me. So mm. you guys have any thoughts or observations so far? Well, you asked the question, how do we help that 11%? And perhaps one of the ways is to continue to do what we're doing, and that is encouraging small group involvement and uh, creating on-ramps uh, to small groups. I think this is a, a key word, creating an on-ramp to a small group where mm -hmm. people can become accountable to one another. Yeah. Uh, Part of biblical Christianity is understanding that it's not a private matter. Uh, that, that's an illusion uh, from the West. But in reality, Christianity from the first century on involved uh, people involved with people, people supporting people, people holding one another accountable. Uh, Galatians says, if you see your brother overtaking him in the fall, you who are spiritual, you go and approach that person. Jesus taught Matthew 18, if your brother sins against you, you the innocent party, go to the guilty party, tell them their fault between you and them, and uh, with the intent of gaining your brother. Uh, he says, if two or more agree on a matter, you know, there's an emphasis there, if two or more agree, where two or more are gathered in my name, you know, that here again, emphasizing that this is not just my private business. If I'm going to walk with the Lord, I have to walk with other brothers and sisters. So that is a lot to do with mm -hmm. that 11%, I would argue. So how, you know, so just encouraging and creating on-ramps. Th thanks for giving me a softball there, Don, yeah. uh, because uh, <laughs> our connect groups are continuing to go. So uh, um, several. So we've kind of, the season, we do these in seasons. The season's kind of uh, come to an end. It's been weird because of the, the pandemic. Mm -hmm. We continued those online. Uh, most of the connect groups are uh, ending for a week, but then relaunching the 1st of June, whatever groups are going to meet through the summer. And so, uh, for instance, our connect that group uh, meets on Tuesday evenings, and we're going to meet for a couple weeks on Zoom. We think mid-June, about along with uh, our services here at New Life, we're going to start uh, meeting live again, unless you know, unless something happens. So, and then. 
So that's one on ramp, and then we have a big promotion in the fall, just as we get back to the school year. And you know, uh, summer can tend to be a little uh, scattered anyway. Uh, so the fall, we'll do a big promotion in the middle of August up through Labor Day, and then the Connect groups will launch uh, that first week, first or second week of September. So those are a couple of on ramps, and uh, I yeah, just could not be more excited uh, about the, uh, the the people that continue to grow and know that Connect groups are uh, an important part of that so yeah. uh, so let us know about that yeah love it mm -hmm. you want me to say something jeff uh i was going to mention that is there uh something in the demographic about somebody that people that wear sandals <laughs> no we didn't did. survey to that so. that'd be one that'd be me one percent a couple <laughs> things i think are is really sweet one having a survey is, that's really encouraging even hearing the things that aren't working I mean that's just always like a thing that is amazing yeah. at least like I love as a, as a community you know we've talked every week in these podcasts um, I think it's exposing I think even uh, areas in people's lives where maybe they didn't even know mm -hmm. they, they don't even they don't know what's happening they're like I'm feeling disconnected or I'm feeling discouraged actually it is people I didn't know that I needed it or it is this thing I didn't know I needed that mm -hmm. and I just I kind of love what we've all done is where we've kind of We've kind of set up and, and really just tried to like, I don't know, what, what's the term? Swing, shoot for the stars, the moon, whatever. Swing for the fences. Swing for the fences. You know, we've tried to really swing for the fences and go after it, even with content. Mm -hmm. um, I think doing podcasts and online services and even as we're getting ready to gather again, the reality is, is that we're going to have to juggle kind of both dynamics now yeah. because there are going to mutually be people that are really comfortable. But Mike, like what you were saying, I'm ready to get back yesterday. Mm -hmm. But then there's people that are like, dude, I probably won't see you even all through the summer. I mean, there's probably really people that are like that. Like, I'm, I just, I'm, I'm, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to be wild to now have an infrastructure that we built through doing, you know, Sunday services or week, you know, whatever week to week things that we're accustomed to, to now living, you know, two months plus into this pandemic, mm -hmm. setting up systems, figuring out what's working, what's not working, yeah. but realizing that we're not just going from this back to normality. Right. Mm -hmm. It's about to be a new, new normal yeah. all over again. Yeah. That's what's crazy is like, we're not coming out of this and going back to what that was. Right. We're leaving this whole situation and now trying to figure out how to mm -hmm. mutually see our community thrive and stay healthy online or connecting in some way and also trying to facilitate people coming into this building or into small groups yeah. or into whatever and figuring it out. So that's what I love about this mm -hmm. is even hearing the things that aren't working and the things that are mutually, we're going to have to go in and even like labor a little bit, you know, harder mm -hmm. and be more effective in both of these, uh, both of these realms of trying to serve mm -hmm. our community, uh, which is, it's exciting, but it definitely sounds like a, a good challenge to take on. Um, but anyways, so yeah. some of my thoughts there. It's wild. That's great, Jordan. Thanks. Uh, You're yeah, welcome, That's Jeff. one of the, uh, with Connect Groups, again, another softball for me. Thank you. You're welcome. Is, uh, <laughs> we're we're uh, learning how to um, offer Connect Groups that will be in person and Connect Groups that will still be online, that will be Zoom Connect Groups. Uh, because one of the things we've noticed is by offering just online Connect Groups, we've had uh, a handful of people that have said, huh, I, I can do that now. I, you know, I travel for work and things like that. So I've never been able to commit to a group. But no, if there's an online group, no matter where I am, I can I can link on. And uh, we're really excited. So be watching. There will still be online groups. And so be looking for that. Jeff, when, when things go back to when groups start meeting together, will there always be at least some online expression of that? Is that what you're saying? Yes, yes. So someone um, will continue to take on like an online group? Yes, that's yeah. exactly right. We're, uh, I'm talking to people. I'm, we're looking for leaders that uh, want to do that or groups that will say, hey, we'll meet in person and offer uh, an cool. online option. So, yep, that's it. That's absolutely right. It's amazing. Thanks for the clarification. That's you got good. it. You got it. Uh, all right, Mike, where do you want to take us next? What else did we learn? Let's talk about what people said they would like to see when we start meeting back together again. So we ask about what physical changes would you like to see? Here's the number one. 83% said hand, size, hand sanitizer stations. Mm. Uh, happy wow. to report. Interesting. Uh, we, we're getting some. Or we have some. Mm -hmm. And yes. so those will be deployed around the building. Mm -hmm. So they'll be there. You can Maybe. use those. So the next one, 62% said have the garage, or, uh, garage doors open, weather permitting. 57% mm -hmm. said prop open the door so I don't have to touch them. Mm -hmm. Then chairs set farther apart and no self-service coffee. Instead, have a coffee server. Yep. So mm. there's just one person touching the coffee. So those are all the physical changes that we ask about. And those are things that are doable, aren't they? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. So we wanted to 
We wanted to just toss it out there, see what really resonated with folks and some things big. Now, even the lowest responding one was a self-service coffee. That was still almost half the respondents. Okay. So probably seems like a good thing to do. Absolutely. Right. Then we ask about behavioral changes. The highest one, 90%, no personal contact, no handshakes, no hugs. That'll be... It's kind of, you'll have to resist the natural instinct to was stick that <laughs> hand out there. And you're exactly right. But 90% of folks said that would be important to them. Sure. we do that. Yeah. And then 31% uh, said they would like to see masks worn by everybody attending. 43% mm. said no paper bulletins. 59% said limited number of people allowed in the auditorium. Okay. So. Again, and I think next week you're going to talk a little more in detail about what the rollout of in-person worship is going to look like. But really, the whole idea behind this exercise was to take input so that we could, using the best information we have at our disposal, from as far as wishes from the church body, plus what we know from those people who are smart about this stuff, so we can measure all that and do the rollout correctly. So there's that. Mm -hmm. Then we ask for uh, other, uh, list any other physical changes or behavioral changes that you want to see. So we had a number of good uh, responses about just some miscellaneous things we can do. Some are real easy. Some we're looking at and we'll, we'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. We'll get through the list. <clears throat> we'll review. We'll see what makes sense and okay. what works. And so that's what we'll do. And I'm, I'm not going to read through because we had 18 people that responded specifically. So we won't take time to, to do that. We ask about changes that people would like to see in Kids City. I, I don't want to jump into this because it only applies to a, a little less than half of the, right. the survey respondents, but I'm guessing you guys next week will jump into detail about what Kids City will look like, right? Uh, yes, it's it's going to be a couple of weeks behind, uh, at least a couple of weeks behind. I think Kids City is our children's program. Children's yes. ministry, yes. Absolutely. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, it's going to be behind the main service that they will not be meeting when we first launch or reunite. or Do, do we know what we're going to call that? Do you like reunited? Is that all right? Never mind. So we're going to go. Uh, that's still a little behind, so we'll address that later. Reunited. And then we'll, let me just jump into these last two, and then we'll stop and discuss. We ask this question as far as an opening date for in-person corporate worship, and here were their responses. If the doors were open this week, I'd be there. 33% mm -hmm. said that would be me. I'd want to follow the lead of downtown businesses. 36% said that. If other churches were open, I'd be ready to attend, 6%. And then 25% said it'll be a while before I'm comfortable coming. <laughs> okay. So okay. that's what we know. Okay. And then we ask for a specific date. Mm -hmm. And again, they're all over the place, but uh, if I were to take them and combine them together, late May, early June, most of the sentiment was right there. Mm -hmm. We had some both directions, but... That's where the bulk of the responses were. Okay. So having said that, especially with the, that last question, we'll, we will uh, make it mostly official. Uh, and so our plan is June the 7th, sat, Sunday, June the 7th, to be our first uh, reunited corporate worship uh, back together again. That's now the that's first Sunday in June, right? First Sunday in June. So, okay. yeah, we were kind of, you know, based on some of that, again, with all the things that are going on, we we're kind of like May 31st, June 7th. Why don't we just give appropriate space? June 7th it is, barring any unforeseeable uh, escalation of things in the next week or so. Okay. So, uh, so there's the announcement, Sunday, June the 7th. Uh, look forward to seeing you guys there. Um, what... Uh, uh, yeah, what kind of ideas or thoughts do you guys have as this information is revealed here? Well, obviously, uh, we have our work cut out for us because uh, we want to be prepared for the people June the 7th. And let's say 125 people show up. We'll be prepared for that because we are going to exercise social distancing. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's important for the people to know. And between now and then, we'll be putting something in place so that uh, the Don Lewis family will know whether to come or not. Uh, are, they, are, are there going to be two services? And uh, just what should I expect? They'll read some uh, instructions. For example, will the Don Lewis family 
will come. Will, should they wear a mask or not? Things like that. So we'll be communicating those things as well in the future. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any thoughts, Mike? Yeah, and I, one thing that I wanted to talk about, uh, I guess I couldn't help but read through this and then think about Romans 14. And if you're not familiar with Romans 14, Paul's addressing some instruction to the Romans, and he said, now, some of you, you know, you're pretty excited about these holidays. And some of you say, oh, man, we've got to pull out all the stops and do a big celebration and, because we're going to have this special day for the Lord. And other folks said, look, man, we're celebrating the resurrection every Sunday, so I don't know what you're all excited about for this one special day. We celebrate the resurrection every day. Mm -hmm. So what's your problem? And Paul's instruction to them was, really, it's okay. Bo you're both okay. Because those of you that are saying, this is a big deal, a big holiday, let's do it upright, you're doing that to honor the Lord. And those of you that are saying, man, we honor the Lord's resurrection every week. Mm -hmm. So Paul says, I'm okay with both of those. Right. And you need to be okay with both of those. And I think as we look at the survey, we have to take the same approach to folks who have vastly different uh, expectations and experiences with the coronavirus. I mean, we've all been, all of us have been shaped sure. in the last eight or ten weeks. Mm -hmm. We've been shaped by job and family and health and all sorts of factors sure. that are making us go, eh, man, I, I, if they were having a service tomorrow, I'd be there. And others are going, mm, I'm not so sure. Mm -hmm. uh, my encouragement I mean, to all of us is to look at that other brother and say, whatever they've decided, they've decided that for the Lord, so I'm, I'm on board mm -hmm. with their decision. Good. Mm -hmm. I'm, on, I'm responsible for mine. Yep. I'm accountable for mine. I've got to do what God tells me to do, but I'm trusting that that other brother is doing the same thing, mm -hmm. and I'm good with that. That's a great word. Mm -hmm. Listening to what you're saying, you're basically telling us that stewardship and faith work together. They are compatible. Stewardship, and that is Don Lewis has a family. I need to look to the Lord as to what's going to be the best for my family, whether I have three kids or not, whatever. That's a matter of stewardship, that I uh, make a decision based on who they are, who the family is, and I'm responsible for that. At the same time, walking by faith. There's a difference between faith and presumption. Right. Presumption is me just jumping out there saying, hey, I don't care what everything anyone says or what's going on. God is going to protect me as I jump off this cliff. That's presumption. Also stupidity. <laughs> uh, so faith is where I seek the Lord for my family and I try to get some sense of direction and as to um, how I'm to proceed. Hmm. And as I do that, I also exercise stewardship. Yes, my kids and I are going to be coming with masks. That's stewardship. Yes, uh, we're going to be looking for hand-washing stations throughout the building. And yes, if any of us feel sickly at all, we're staying home. That's stewardship. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Yeah, I think it'll be critical to... to I'm even thinking about like as leadership, but not, not even just as a leadership team, but even as we start gathering to even to not get so excited that this is taking place, that we lessen um, how much how much we provide for even people that are choosing to stay home. Um, you see what I'm saying? So it's like it could be easy to in three weeks, you know, we're it might be a lot of work, but we're here. We're so over the top that we're gathering, but still like forsaking. Uh, you know, responsibility over people who are mutual. Like we're basically saying, we respect that. We're, this is what we're saying right now. We respect your decision to stay home as much as the one, uh, as much as the decision you make to come here. And so, how can we mutually make sure that that we're still providing and stewarding and you know um, helping people participate in the same value that we're getting here in person? You know, still over the, you know, uh, over the over that medium. So um, that's one thing that I'm thinking about. Um, so yeah, that'll be that'll be huge. Yeah, yeah, that's that's great, Jordan. I, I couldn't agree more. It's uh, if we looked at those statistics, it was about twenty five percent said, I don't know when I'm ready, uh, and that's a quarter. That's that's a quarter of our family, uh, church family, that's saying, I'm not sure. And so, how are we going to continue to, uh, like you were saying, to continue to serve them and uh, and be together as right. a family, even though they they're going to choose to stay away for a little while. 
while. Um, That's going to be key. And we want to be understanding and empathetic and there's just, yes, supportive. There's just not a right or a wrong to this. There's just not. Um, And so, uh, so uh, one of my, one of the things I wanted to encourage us with is, uh, you know, we talk about statistics, we talk about policies and plans and things and uh, the church, uh, the body of Christ is about relationships. And so, uh, so if you uh, know somebody that's going to be that 25%, uh, we need to reach out to them. And if you're in that 25%, uh, let us know, reach out to us. Let's continue the relationship that God has brought us together under. Right. And uh, that's the point of it all. Mm-hmm. So, uh, um, and I, I love the way, again, as we saw from so much of the statistics, the, uh, the maturity, the, uh, the heart, just the, uh, the spiritual fiber that, uh, uh, new life is made of. And, mm-hmm. uh, I so appreciate that. And so let's continue growing in that and pressing into that. So, you know, as, um, we are laying out these principles, I think it's important to recognize, uh, Jordan, you and uh, Pastor Troy have been faithful to be here every Sunday. I know you weren't here this past Sunday, but previous Sundays, you you are leading worship to uh, an empty sanctuary here, knowing that people are watching you online, but they certainly are not here. And you've been faithful to do that. And that that cannot be easy. And then Troy has been preaching to an empty sanctuary. Um, I just want to express my appreciation as a member of New Life City Church, just what that means, because I was at home and watching you guys, and uh, I was I was singing along with you, but you could not experience that, mm. me supporting you. Thank you. Well, that means a lot. Yeah. Thank you very much. Your faithfulness. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Well, great. That's certainly a, a good word to end on, and uh, we, uh, yeah, we're super appreciative of all the efforts, and uh, uh, we probably, we hopefully say this often, we're appreciative of the efforts that this podcast is coming to you. Jacob, thank you very much, and, and your team on Sundays. Uh, we're going to continue to do it, so it's not like the live stream's ending. We're just going to have people actually here while we're live streaming, so that'll be cool. Um, Mike, again, thanks so much for taking time to be here. It's thanks awesome. for all this uh, work that you've done and uh, yeah and it's I I love your heart and I know the purpose is for to gather the information in order to make us a healthier body uh, to be the bride of Christ I know that's what you want so and that's what we want so thanks for joining us today and uh, we look forward to seeing you very soon so have a great day